We are pleased to be joined by artist Santo Mirabili, our January Artist of the Month at the Foundry, the home of the Caroline County Council of Arts. I'm Executive Director Nicholas Tyndall and Santo, thank you for being here with us today. You're welcome. You mentioned that this is a new expressive path for you. How did you previously express yourself through artwork? Well, if you're talking about visual art, which I think you are, uh, it all started out with graphic design. However, in college, we were taught a wide range of artistic endeavors in gar uh, regarding the uh, visual arts. So I was doing oil painting, I was doing watercoloring, I was doing uh, sketching and drawing and, and uh, everything from li live models, even nude models we had, to uh, landscapes. And so I, I, had, I had to choose something that I really, that I really wanted to do. Uh, but what I really wanted to do more than anything, I wasn't taught in college. I wanted to make mobiles because I had seen Alexander Calder's work in Washington, D.C. And I thought, none of this was taught to me at the Maryland Institute College of Art. You know, I got a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Graphic Design. So while I was uh, going to college, art college, I was also playing music in the evenings, a professional musician in local bands. We were a cover band. And that was very helpful too, because I could pay for a car. And I was living at home too, so I was commuting to school. So uh, we were doing our best to try and make it all work financially. And then we were very conscious of my future and how music would, might still play a major role, but if it didn't, I'd have the Bachelor of Fine Arts degree and I could get a job in, in the commercial art. Why did you choose collages and mobiles as your medium? That's a good question. And it's, it's just one that I can say that I dreamt about. The summer between my junior and my senior year of college, I went with the College of Notre Dame to tour all over Europe. And so I got a chance to go to all the major galleries. And, and, uh, and I saw the work that inspired me the most was the uh, mid-century Impressionists and the Expressionists. And, uh, and anything to do with both the music and the art of that period from the late 19th century to the early 20th century. And, uh, and when I came back, I knew for a fact that I wanted to start there and then branch, branch out. Through the years of thought and experimentation, what did you learn about your art? And what did you learn about yourself? I don't believe you can learn how to make great art. It's the same with music. Um, you, have to, you have to learn how to, uh, you have to learn all the physical ways to make something before you can go beyond that and give it life, soul, heart. Um, you have to build something and wreck it down before you know that it's good or not good. So in many ways, everything that you do, you have to destroy. And, and, and until you can destroy it and build it back up again, you haven't made anything that's original and you haven't done anything that other people are going to recognize as fine art. I mean, you can go ahead and you can do karaoke if you want to be a musician, but it's not fine art. You're copying something or you're listening to something that you liked that somebody else did. Where are you in this, in this uh, picture? You're not there. For you to be there, you have to destroy something and then build it up again. What are you most excited for people to see when they come see your new art exhibition? Oh, I want them to see the, uh, the play of light on my work and the way it, it reacts to the room that they're in. The mobiles react with light and air because they move from the movement. It could be from the people moving, it could be from the air coming in the window, a ceiling fan, the heating going on and off. Uh, with the wall art, it's more about the light, the way it comes and goes. Um, and I used, I, I tore up a bunch of violins, five violins. I mean, I ripped them apart. I sanded on them, I cut them up. I did all kinds of great stuff with them. Oh, I got them 
by the way, I did, they were they were already trashed violins. Okay, so I didn't destroy anybody's anybody's musical instrument. I I, I wouldn't do that. I, I I bought them very inexpensively from a shop where he, a guy who repairs violins. Okay, he was going to throw them out anyhow. So uh, and it really inspired me because the wood the workmanship and just the violin itself. When you tear it apart, you actually see what no one ever sees. What does the inside of a violin look like? How does it make all that noise, you know, or that music? And so that inspired me to go ahead and bring the idea of music, the, the way uh, the, the musical instrument and tied in with my being also a musician and also being a, 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 de a designer. And so I want them to see great design. I hope it's great design. And I want them to see something that possibly they might want to keep for a long time. And then someday when we're all dead, it'll be worth even more. <laughs>